Personalized medicine is really um, diving into the genetics of a patient's tumor and disease and identifying where it's gone wrong in specific terms and then identifying that, those genes or pathways and targeting them with specific therapies. First, you have to develop the technologies to do these things, and so they take a lot of time and a lot of money, but once they're developed, they become incredibly cheap or cheaper. For instance, sequencing the first human genome uh, cost over a billion dollars, and now we can sequence an entire genome for $800. So you can start to ask bigger and bigger questions. Immune therapies are using one's own immune cells to target one's own cancer, and so what, how that's done is that we take the immune cells Cells. They're often T cells or they can be natural killer cells. And we put genes into them through retroviruses or lentiviruses. The genes get integrated into the DNA of those immune cells and they express a protein which allows that immune cell to target the tumor. So it's like a heat seeking missile. So we redirect the immune cells and if you can redirect your immune cells to a specific target, you can really uh, provide a killer punch to, to tumors. Natural killer cells or NK cells are one of the innate uh, immune cell types that help protect us from infection and also mediate anti-tumor response. What they really do is work together with other immune cells as the first responder and they can do a couple of things. They can kill cancer cells and they can orchestrate other immune cells to come in and help mediate a bigger immune response to that cancer. We have a, a unique way that was first discovered at Washington University uh, and then you know developed uh, within our group where we're able to use a cocktail of cytokines to highly activate NK cells, kind of like train them, get that, get them uh, uh, revved up, uh, and then and then we transfer those into patient uh, as a cellular therapy. Within the patient, those cells then differentiate uh, into these very potent effectors that we call memory-like NK cells. And right now, we're using them, you know, kind of in isolation as adoptive therapy to put AML and other uh, other diseases into remission. And then also, we're using them in the context of a transplant, where we're using them to kind of boost up the anti-leukemic activity early on to work later on with other cells like T cells, for example, uh, to then eventually and hopefully cure the patient. Before we really started sequencing AML genomes, uh, the disease was a black box. We really didn't have a clear understanding of why some therapies worked in some patients and why uh, some didn't. But with sequencing, uh, we basically were able to uncover all the mutations that are relevant for the initiation of the disease and for its progression and what contributes to relapse and why. And it also taught us uh, very importantly why certain targeted therapies are successful and others fail. Off the shelf uh, immunotherapies means using cells from someone else. Normally, you would use your own cells because they're yours and they will not recognize you as non-self, so they won't attack you. But sometimes you can't collect enough of these cells and also uh, it takes a long time to prepare them and during that time, patients can die from their disease. And so it would be nice if you could just dial up this product and say, I want them the next day and get them the next day so you can treat your patient immediately. To do that, you'd need to use someone else's cells. To make this feasible, we disable the gene by deleting through CRISPR, both copies of a gene that allow those T cells from someone else to recognize you as non-self. And so now those T cells are just like your T cells. They don't recognize you as non-self, but when we put that heat-seeking missile in them, they go just to your tumor. MDS is a disease where people have uh, bone marrow abnormalities that are driven by mutations in their, in their blood cells. So it is a blood cancer and a third of the people will go on and get a secondary acute myeloid leukemia. This is very aggressive, difficult to treat. The only cure for those two diseases is a bone marrow transplant. Washington University was really fortunate to get awarded a new center for MDS that was funded by an endowment gift from Edward P. Evans Foundation. And so the Edward P. Evans uh, Center for MDS, or myelodysplastic syndrome, brings together 20 investigators across four different departments and the McDonald Genome Institute in addition to that, all under one umbrella to really care for and perform transformative research to try and improve the lives and ultimately cure or prevent MDS. The Genomics of AML Program Project Grant uh, is in its 16th year of funding. It's a, it's a National Cancer Institute grant that we started um, really before even the whole genome sequencing that uh, 
kind of became the trademark of this particular grant. Uh, we started uh, with an eye to setting up uh, the infrastructure to do sequencing of large numbers of AML cases. And uh, basically over the past uh, 20 years now, have created an enormous uh, database of patients and their samples with great clinical annotation and now with uh, a large amount of sequencing that's been done on the vast majority of these samples. So the sample collection itself is, uh, has become a, a major toolbox, uh, a discovery tool for innovation and creativity for the investigators who work uh, within our group. So the SPORE programs are grants that are given out by the National Cancer Institute, and they're, they're given out in different types of cancers, prostate, breast cancer. There are three leukemia spores currently in the country, ours, MD Anderson's, and at Harvard. As exciting as this research is, the, the truth is we still have a long way to go in terms of um, caring for our patients. We still, most patients with AML, for instance, um, are elderly and we still don't have curative therapy. So, so as much as we've done, we've got a long way to go. I think that we were really at the very forefront of personalized medicine, but I think where we're different is that we're moving into new frontiers that nobody else is there yet. And so the things that we're doing now will become hopefully standard of care in the next decade or so.